I'm sorry, but about the amusement park. Please go with our daughter on your own. I don't have time to waste on such trivial things. You understand that I'm busy with work, right? As soon as my husband returned home from work, he said that abruptly. Our daughter was peacefully sleeping in bed. She was looking forward to tomorrow's amusement park and was happily sleeping with a stuffed animal in her arms. Dad's been busy working all week, so we can finally go hang out together. As I recalled the joyful expression on her face, a slight anger started to well up towards my husband. What do you mean by trivial things? You neglected family for so long, broke your promise, and that's all you have to say? While trying to keep my tone down so as not to wake up our daughter, I can't help but express my dissatisfaction to my husband. Surely he will understand. If I go this far, he should at least say something like I'm sorry or can I rearrange my work? And if that's not possible, he should offer to make it up somehow. I thought he would at least give me words of consideration like that, but I'm on a business trip on short notice, so I don't have a choice. The wife of a section chief or department head would understand that much. That's why I can't get promoted. I have to leave early tomorrow morning, so can I go to sleep now? I don't have time to listen to pointless complaints about things that can't be helped. I see. Surely, what my husband said is right. Thanks to him, we can live a comfortable life without any inconvenience. And maybe, by opposing him, I'm the one who is seen as a bad wife by society. I wonder how other families handle situations like this. With those thoughts in mind, I let out a sigh. Before hearing my response, my husband went to the bedroom. Left behind, I decided that I would behave cheerfully and energetically tomorrow so as not to make our daughter feel lonely. However, little did I know that my determination would lead to an unexpected and disastrous situation later on. My name is Luna, and I'm 36 years old. I live with my husband Anthony, who is two years younger than me, and our daughter Claire, who is in her final year of kindergarten. Anthony works at a well-established local company, why I work part-time at a large neighborhood bookstore surrounded by my beloved books. Anthony and I got married as childhood friends. We became neighbors when my parents moved in across the street from the house Anthony originally lived in. Since then, our families have truly had a close relationship, just like one big extended family. So I never thought that we would end up getting married and becoming relatives in the future. The turning point came when I left home to attend university. At that time, I couldn't see the familiar face that I had taken for granted every day, and I felt a sense of loneliness. That was when we finally realized that we were in love with each other. Even though it was a bit embarrassing transitioning from being close friends who would sometimes argue to becoming romantic partners. Since we knew each other's strengths and weaknesses, our marriage was based on a deep understanding of each other, so there was no disillusionment after getting married. Our parents also had a good relationship with each other, so we didn't have to worry about our relationship with our in-laws. Anthony was also very kind to me. When we were childhood friends, we would sometimes exchange harsh words and argue with each other, but after we became a married couple, we were in a reasonably loving mood and we were able to have a child without incident. We truly lived happy days. Anthony's behavior changed around the time Claire was born. At first, Anthony genuinely adored Claire. However, as we started to revolve our lives around Claire, with both me and my parents-in-law focusing on her, Anthony started to sulk. He began complaining like a child, saying, Always busy with the child and never paying attention to me. It's nothing more than him expressing, I want to be the most important to you. That's Anthony's way of seeking attention. At first, 
I thought his neediness was cute. However, I started to feel my heart growing colder towards my husband, who would become upset if he wasn't prioritized over the child. He never made an effort to participate in child rearing, and even when we spent time together at home or went out as a family, he showed no interest in caring for Claire. He didn't help with household chores and was constantly glued to his smartphone. When it came to Claire, Let's play together! Daddy, pick me up! Even when she spoke to him, he would respond, but never took his eyes off his smartphone, completely ignoring Claire. And Anthony had another troubling point. Due to his belief that he should be the most important, Anthony had an unusually high level of pride. He has a strong liking for acquiring and wearing expensive items to fulfill his self esteem. It's troublesome when he makes purchases that are beyond his income. But there was also this incident. It happened when Claire was around three years old, while Anthony was taking a bath. There was a time when I left his luxury wristwatch, which he always wears on the dining table. Claire, who had started intimating adults, happened to find it. Look, look! I look like daddy, right? As she put the watch on her wrist and played, Anthony returned from the bath. Seeing Claire using his own watch as a toy, Anthony started shouting angrily. He scolded Claire harshly. If it was such an important item, it was a mistake to leave it within reach of a child. On top of that, what kind of father loses his temper with a three-year-old child? As a father and a partner who supports his family, I wanted my husband to somehow change his way of thinking and behavior. I had discussed this with him several times, but it didn't seem to resonate with Anthony at all. Then one day, on my father-in-law's birthday, the whole family visited Anthony's parents' house. The parents-in-law welcomed Claire with joy, while Anthony, as usual, seemed uninterested in it, acting like a child. Suppressing the urge to click my tongue, I entered my in-law's house. In the living room, Anthony's twin brother, Jackson, had already arrived. Anthony and Jackson were identical twins, resembling each other not only in appearance, but also in their voices. Even my parents-in-law had difficulty telling them apart when they dressed and styled their hair the same way. Hey Luna, Claire, it's been a while. Though they look alike, Jackson's personality is a complete opposite of Anthony's. He always wears a gentle smile and is considerate of those around him. He treats Claire kindly, always speaking to her in a gentle voice and playing with her. Claire really adores Jackson. When she saw Jackson, she hugged him tightly, saying, Uncle Jackson! Oh, you've grown bigger again. And you've become a big sister, too. You're truly the older one, aren't you? Jackson gently and with a smile stroked Claire's head. Claire happily settled on Jackson's lap. Seeing Jackson's bright expression, I also felt relieved. Actually, Jackson had experienced a tragedy a few years ago when his fiancé passed away in an accident. He was crying heavily at the funeral, and for a while, he seemed deeply saddened. But recently, he found a new partner, and gradually, that calm smile has returned to his face. Thank you for playing with Claire, Jackson. She's always so fond of me. That's why she's cute. I wish Anthony would dote on Claire like Jackson does. I was about to say those words, but if I were to speak them out loud, I could already foresee that Anthony would sulk again. Unaware of my thoughts, Anthony sits down next to Jackson. Yes, despite their completely opposite personalities, their sibling bond is very strong. While Anthony and Jackson exchange updates on their lives, Claire happily reads a picture book. I leave Claire in their care and head to the kitchen to help my mother-in-law. Lucy, I bought the cake you requested. 
Oh, Luna, thank you. It must have been happy since it's large, right? Anthony should have had the courtesy to bring it himself. It's fine because I used a car. Besides, I wanted to talk to Jackson since it's been a while. Indeed, when Jackson lost his fiance, we were worried about him. It must have been tough for both you and Bob, right? Indeed, Jackson's state of depression was once really serious. There was even a fear that he might follow after his fiance and end up in a similar situation. My father in law and my mother in law didn't let their guard down even for a moment. But you know, the person he is currently dating seems really nice. She's actually planning to come over to our house. Wow, that's great news. Maybe I will get to meet her soon. Yes, once things settle down, it would be nice to have a girls' gathering, wouldn't it? Saying that, my mother in law laughed mischievously. I love this aspect of her. Because I'm her daughter in law, there's no need to be overly curious, and she treats me just like a friend. While chatting together, we continued preparing the meal, and as soon as the dishes were ready, we tried to bring them to the living room. A loud laughter echoed from the living room. It seems that they were getting excited and engrossed in a discussion about Jackson's new partner. I heard Jackson, you've got a new girlfriend? Well, something like that. What kind of person is she? Don't you have any photos or anything? We've actually planned for her to come over to my place. So once that's done, I will introduce her to you, Anthony. Hmm, don't keep him in suspense. How did you two meet anyway? Well, that's... Why he looks embarrassed. I'm sure it's not an unpleasant topic for Jackson either. Through Anthony's persistent and probing questioning, Jackson started to share more and more about their getting to know each other's stories and funny anecdotes. Jackson himself must be filled with happiness. Jackson's father genuinely seems delighted to hear about it. I had the impression that Jackson's father too was welcoming the new person who was supporting Jackson and playing a role in his life. All right, the dishes are ready. We'll start bringing them over. So I'd appreciate it if you could help too. Upon hearing that, it was Jackson who quickly got up while Anthony lazily rose being pulled up by Claire. Oh, that was delicious. Thanks to your mother and Luna as well. Thank you for the wonderful meal. Well then, shall we have cake now? Huh? We just finished eating. It's fine, isn't it? Come on, please help gather the plates. With a cheerful voice of my mother-in-law, the men stacked the dinner plates and cleared the table while she brought the cake. Anthony and Jackson excused themselves from the table, saying, We'll step outside for a smoke. Meanwhile, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, and I casually chatted by cutting and enjoying the cake. Grandpa, please stay healthy forever. Oh, I'd like that. I want to see Claire in her wedding dress and even hold my great-grandchild. Oh my, you're getting ahead of yourself. Claire looked puzzled at the conversation between her grandparents, but indeed, such a future might arrive in about 20 years if it comes quickly. That's right. We want both of you to see Claire wearing a wedding dress. Please stay healthy for a long time. Oh my goodness, we still have to try our hardest. As the three of us laughed together, Anthony and Jackson returned. Jackson had a flyer in his hand. Hey, Jackson, what's that? It was a flyer that Claire keenly noticed, and it turned out to be a brochure for an amusement park near my in-law's house. It was a limited time event for the 10th anniversary of the park's opening, where residents of the city could enter for free and enjoy unlimited rides with a day pass. Look, can you see the Ferris wheel over there? They are inviting everyone who lives around here. Invitation? Can I go too? Claire's eyes sparkled. 
I want to go. I want to go. I want to go with mommy and daddy. Um, such a hassle. I gave Anthony a slight glare. Anthony quickly averted his eyes. Why not? Next Saturday seems to have good weather, so why not take Claire there once in a while? Jackson, nice assist. Claire became completely delighted by those words, and reluctantly, Anthony agreed to go to the amusement park next Saturday with everyone. It's really unacceptable to make such an obvious face of annoyance in front of the child, but Claire is so happy. Next week. He needs to fulfill his role as a father properly. I smiled with satisfaction, and so, on Friday night, the eve of the amusement park visit. Sorry, but the amusement park tomorrow won't work. As soon as Anthony returned home from work, he suddenly said those words. What do you mean? I have a sudden business trip, and I have to leave early tomorrow morning. I see. I wondered why he had to bring up a business trip so suddenly, but if it's work-related, there's nothing we can do about it. I have several negotiations to handle, so I probably won't be able to return until late tomorrow. I will have to stay overnight. Understood. I will talk to Claire about it. When I said that, Anthony seemed relieved and smiled. Sorry, I will make up to you properly next time. Really, make sure to apologize to Claire as well. However, or rather, as expected, Claire was extremely disappointed and started throwing a tantrum. Well, it's understandable. She was thrilled at the opportunity to go out with Daddy after a long time. I tried to convince her by saying that we would take her another time, but no, I don't want to. I want to go tomorrow. She was on the verge of tears. Then, if Daddy can't go, I want to go with Jackson. Huh, Jackson? If Daddy can't come, I want to go to the amusement park with Jackson. Oh no, she said something quite difficult. Although Claire doesn't usually make such selfish demands, it seems she must have been really disappointed this time. I let out a sigh and tried to explain it to Claire. All right then, let's try calling Jackson right now. If Jackson says yes, we'll go with him. But even if Jackson is unable to, you must not get upset, okay? Is that still okay with you? Claire nodded in agreement. Taking a chance, I called Jackson. Jackson was surprised. But it seemed that he also suddenly had no plans for tomorrow, so he gladly accepted the opportunity to go out with Claire. With a sigh of relief, I started preparing for tomorrow. The next day, there was a pleasant blue sky, perfect for a day at the amusement park. I prepared the lunch boxes in the morning and headed to the meeting place with Claire. Jackson, I'm really sorry for the sudden change of plans today. As I apologized, Jackson smiled. Oh no, it's all right. Actually, I also had my date canceled today. Oh, by your girlfriend? She had an unexpected matter that she couldn't cancel. The truth is, I was planning to invite her here. She has a child, so I thought it would be nice to plan something that would make them happy. Oh, she has a child? Yes. She's two years younger than Claire. I think they could get along well. That's wonderful. If she's interested, how about going out or having a meal together with everyone? It might be nice for the kids to play together too. I would love that. Next time, I will talk to her about it. Jackson seemed very disappointed by the canceled date, but he smiled when we talked about going out together next time. Then. Claire happily held hands with her beloved uncle and enjoyed the amusement park with excitement. Jackson, next is that one. I want to ride that one. All right, let's go. Yay! Jackson had a cheerful smile as he accompanied Claire. If only Anthony could dote on Claire like this, 
it would be wonderful. Seeing the two of them working together, I couldn't help but feel a little wistful. Then, I started receiving a series of messages and photos from Anthony on WhatsApp. I've arrived at my business trip destination. I'm having dinner here right now. Don't forget to get me a souvenir. Along with the photos and messages that kept coming in one after another. Since Anthony is working hard on his job, I realized there's no use sulking too much myself. I decided to change my mindset. Sorry, Claire. I need to go to the restroom. Okay, come back quickly. Jackson made a small gesture of apology with his hands in front of his face and left the spot. I guided Claire to a nearby bench to have some water, and Claire pointed behind me and said, Mommy, is that girl lost? When I turned to the direction Claire was pointing, I saw a small girl walking around on her own, looking like she might cry at any time. Claire and I hurried over to the girl. Um, you know, my mommy is not here. It's okay. We'll ask the amusement park staff to help us find her. Okay. The girl seemed slightly relieved. Claire said, Don't worry, it will be fine. Claire held the girl's hand. I sent a message to Jackson explaining the situation through WhatsApp, and the three of us started working towards the lost and found center. After a short while, the girl suddenly stopped walking. Ah! There's mommy! Mommy's there! Huh? The girl. Over there! She pointed in that direction. There stood Anthony, who was supposed to be on his business trip, and an unfamiliar woman who seems flustered. That is, for a moment, I thought it might be someone who resembled him. But the shining watch on his wrist was an expensive one that Claire had played with and he got angry about before. He lied to his wife and went on a secret date, wearing the best watch, that's what it meant. I felt a cold wind blowing quickly in the back of my head. I quietly approached Anthony and the woman, and then spoke up. Your child is lost. What? Oh, thank goodness! I was so worried when she suddenly disappeared. Thank you so much. The woman kept bowing her head repeatedly, and I, by the way, I said with a serious expression, I'm this person's wife, but who are you? Huh? The woman's complexion changed quickly. For a moment, she didn't seem to understand the meaning of my words, but soon, she glared back at me sharply. I'm this person's girlfriend. Anthony turned pale between me and the woman. Just then, Jackson returned from the restroom. Oh, Luna and Claire, there you are. I'm glad I caught up with you. Huh? Jackson, you're with both of them? Julia, what are you doing here? You said you had something to do today. Jackson looked at Anthony, who was standing behind the woman trying to hide. Anthony, why are you with Julia? Um, well... I wonder why someone who should be on a business trip is at the amusement park. Well... Unable to come up with an excuse, Anthony became visibly suspicious, but I stood in front of him. Following my lead, Jackson and the woman surrounded him, clothing in on Anthony. What on earth is going on? Realizing the situation was hopeless, Anthony stammered and confessed. After the birthday party for my father-in-law the other day, Anthony had seen a photo of Jackson's girlfriend. Upon seeing that photo, Anthony fell in love at first sight and apparently wanted to meet her and, if possible, go on a date with her. Coincidentally, Jackson received a phone call from that girlfriend at that moment. Unfortunately, Jackson was not at his seat at that moment. So Anthony pretended to be Jackson and answered the phone. He managed to arrange a date for today, without Jackson's knowledge. She said she was busy on Saturdays, so we should hang out some other time. He lied and left a false message. 
Jackson found it puzzling in many ways, but he never expected that Anthony would come up with such a foolish scheme. He simply believed what Anthony said without thinking that he would be involved in something like this. Feeling our cold stares, Anthony wear a guilty expression on his face. However, surprisingly, the words that came out of Anthony's mouth next were not an apology, but an excuse. It's natural for any man to want to go on a date with an attractive person, right? Besides, if you guys hadn't shown up, Julia wouldn't have noticed anything. Without any interference, the date would have ended smoothly, and Julia wouldn't have been surprised. It's because you guys made a fuss that things got complicated. Yeah, that's right. The one at fault here is not me, but you guys who create a big commotion. The three of us were not just angry, but beyond that, we were also exasperated. Meanwhile, the onlookers were eagerly watching the unfolding situation with great interest. Anthony unleashed a barrage of words towards those around him. Hey, this isn't happening. I was too disappointed to think about what to do after that. Daddy, when you do something wrong, you say I'm sorry. Claire, who had been quietly by our side, sat with a smile on her face. At that moment, everyone around burst into laughter. Even we couldn't help but be drawn into the laughter. Anthony, his pride wounded and his ears turning red, was about to say something in response, but then, Hey mom, that's right. Even my teacher at kindergarten said so. Exactly, dear. When you do something wrong, you say I'm sorry, right? That's right, just as your big sister said. By laughing, the woman and I glared at Anthony. Applause and cheers erupted from somewhere. Anthony, unable to bear the situation any longer, finally left us behind and ran away. Now, let's fast forward to the aftermath. First, I divorced Anthony. I had grown tired of him not helping with household chores or childcare, and this incident was the final straw. He acted solely on his own desires, told lies to cover up his actions, and even after everything came to light, he didn't apologize, but instead became defensive. I didn't need a father like him, no way. In front of Anthony, I thoroughly berated him for everything that had happened, and then I slammed the divorce papers on the table. I returned my parents home with Claire. Of course, my parents fully supported my decision, and even my usually calm father-in-law and mother-in-law were furious this time. Even my mother-in-law, who usually brushes off most things with an oh my, was furious and said, What on earth are you doing when you have a precious wife and daughter? My father-in-law declared, Don't ever set foot in our house again. It seems that my father-in-law made a declaration of estrangement. Naturally, the relationship with Jackson was also severed and Anthony struggled to manage household chores alone, resulting in the house becoming a mess. Additionally, it seems that someone from Anthony's company happened to be at the amusement park that day, and news of the incident quickly spread within the company. I can only imagine how uncomfortable Anthony must feel at work. Three days after the incident, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law came to my parents' house together. They were in a bowing position, apologizing profusely. However, in the first place, this whole situation was Anthony's personal issue. For Claire, her love for her grandpa and grandma remains unchanged. They are beloved people, who have taken care of me since I was little, and they hold a special place in my heart. Even after the incident, I visit my in-laws' house a few times a month and they dote on Claire. After six months since the incident, Jackson and his girlfriend got married and happily started their life together as a family of three. Of course, both Claire and my parents attended the wedding ceremony. 
the relationship between my in-laws, Jackson's family, myself, Claire, and my parents is great. We are planning a trip where everyone can be together. Claire absolutely adores her new cousin, a little girl. It looks like we have a new little sister. So cute! She expresses her joy enthusiastically. All is well in the world. It's another peaceful day.